Our body is bombarded by several pathogens every day. And these pathogens include viruses, bacteria, fungi, and even helminth. Let's look at how our immune system responds against this helminth infection. Now, let me tell you that parasitic worms or helminths which frequently affect humans can be broadly classified into three groups. First, the cestodes, which are the tapeworms. Second, the nematodes, which are the roundworms. And then trematodes, which are the flukes. Generally, they enter our body via intestinal tract and they can contaminate food or water and they can come from the fecal matter of an infected person. Now, let me tell you, these helminths are exclusively extracellular. And therefore, they are more accessible towards the immune system to mount an immune response. Though they are accessible, but they cannot divide inside our body to that extent, but they can mature inside our body. So the immune system is rather mild compared to, let's say, a virus or a bacteria. So let us look at how this immune system works against these kind of helmets. So let me tell you that more than 300 million people are infected with cytostoma infection every year which can cause severe symptoms. So let us look at how our body reacts to these helminth infection. Cytostoma has an interesting life cycle. They spend some amount of time in our body and sometimes they also spend in snail's tissue. And their eggs or immature forms could be also found in fresh water. So let's say you went for a swimming and you suddenly get exposed to the infectious life uh, phase of these cytostoma, which is known as cercaria. So cercaria can drill hole in your skin and can get into your system. And from there, it can get into your bloodstream. Now, when cercaria is inside the blood, it would be detected by your complement proteins, which are abundant in your bloodstream. Then there are many cell types which can recognize these complement proteins and have complement receptors on their surface such as dendritic cells and macrophages so they would mount the first level of immune response other than that there would be antibodies which are against to these cercaria these antibody would coat the surface of these cercaria and make it weaker making it difficult for them to survive then other cell types such as eosinophil neutrophil and nk cells can mount an immune response. So let us look at this process in bit more details and in step-by-step -step fashion. So here is our cercaria, which is coated by the complement proteins. So obviously there would be some plasma cells which would be generated which are specific against these cercaria and they would secrete IgE antibody. So it's important to know that IgE antibodies are key player in this process. Now, IgE antibody would bind to specific antigens present on this cercaria. Then, mast cell, which is capable of binding to IgE via FC receptor, would degranulate. Mast cell would eventually recruit eosinophil, neutrophils, etc. onto these cercaria larva because eosinophil, neutrophil both have FC receptors and all of these can take part in antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity responses. Now, another important cell population that takes a major role in the immunity against cytostoma is the Th1 cell. Th1 cell can secrete interferon gamma, which indeed can activate macrophages. So it would increase the activity of macrophages and enhance phagocytosis. Now, other than that, eosinophil, mast cell, neutrophil, all of them can secrete certain amount of chemokines, which would ultimately attract other blood cell. By the way, while fixing complement, there are C3A and C5A, which are potent anaphylatoxin. So obviously, they can also attract other blood cells and create inflammation in the system. So due to inflammation in the system, cell types such as neutrophil and monocytes would get out of the blood vessels and they would reach the tissue space where the infection happened. So obviously what would happen is they create a strong immune response against these cercaria larva. Now let's look at how complement system can eliminate the 
pathogens. So obviously com complement systems decorate these pathogen kind of opsonizing it making it more difficult for the pathogen to survive but obviously these IgE antibodies can bind on the surface and ultimately lead to formation of the membrane attack complex which leads to fluid um, disbalance and due to this osmolarity disbalance there would be lysis of the pathogen. So overall we looked at how our body reacts to cytostoma infection, how our complement systems and innate immune components infect uh, can mount an immune response against them. Obviously, we also looked at adaptive immune components such as IgE producing mast cells and Th1 cells can also mount an immune response against them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this short video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and do let me know in the comment how you like my videos. Thank you guys.